right. Well, good morning. Good to see everyone out this morning. Good to have some visitors with us this morning. And uh, good to see each one of you. Thank you for being here at Putnamville Baptist Church. We hope and pray that you have already been blessed for being here this morning. I know I've been encouraged. And uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to invite him to be with us in a service. And then we'll have our uh, service this morning. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we thank you for uh, all that you do for us, the, the good and the bad. Lord, we thank you for, uh, Lord, uh, for the praises and for the valleys. Lord, we ask this morning that you would speak to our hearts and give us exactly what we need to hear this morning. I pray that, uh, Lord, we'll leave here knowing that we'd heard from you. Lord, I pray that if there's one here that doesn't know you, that today would be the day of salvation. Speak to our hearts only as you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Morning. Morning. It's a little loud today. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Stayed warm all through the week. So go ahead and turn over to 375. 375. First, second, and last. Go ahead and stand and turn back to 550. In 550. This is not a very often sung hymn, but it's a very good one. First, second, and last.
All right, when you get back to your seat, go ahead and turn over 366. 366. And sing uh, at the cross, an old favorite hymn of mine. We'll do the first and last verse for you.
Amen. I do appreciate you being here this morning. Again, I hope and pray that you've been blessed for being here. And uh, it's good to see uh, some visitors with us. Good to see some old friends. Brother Caleb, uh, he's here with us this morning. Thank you for being here. He brought, uh, he brought his new fiance, Megan, with him today. So it's good to have them with us. And uh, good to have uh, Derek and Lindsay with us this morning. And uh, good to have each and every one of you uh, thank you so much for being here. Looking forward to what the Lord has for us this morning. And uh, let me remind you, right after our morning service, we'll take a, just a couple minutes uh, break, and uh, then we'll go right into our afternoon service. If you're able to stick around, I want to encourage you to do so. If not, I completely understand, and at that point you could be dismissed. Uh, but that'll be at the end of our service, our first service, then go right into our second service. We're doing that for the, uh, the month of February and then probably the month of March as well. And uh, just because of the daylight, uh, uh, some of our folks uh, have a hard time driving at night. And so it's working out really well for them. And uh, also uh, for a lot of people are saying it's real nice to have uh, our services done. Then we have the afternoon uh, free time and things such as that to spend with family. So I do encourage you to be here for that. All right. Over the years, I've I've been asked, uh, Pastor Pastor Ricky, what where do you get your messages from, or uh, how do you get your sermons? And I'd like to say and like to think that I, I I get them from the Lord, but sometimes God sends messengers. God sends things to me that uh, that help develop a thought or help develop messages in my heart, uh, kind of motivate me towards a message. And when I was assistant pastor at Lifeline, I. Uh, had a, I, was, I was sitting at my desk with my hands over my, like this, kind of, and had my eyes closed, and, and I was uh, sitting there, and I heard the door open up. And so I looked up, and there was a little boy, and he looked at me with his big eyes, and he sat down in his chair and, and right across from me, and he said, Pastor Ricky, he said, I saw you were sleeping. <laughs> and I said, well... I wasn't sleeping, I was praying. You know how some of you guys do? No, I actually was praying at this time, uh, this time. Um, but anyways, I said I was praying. That kind of satisfied him a little bit. And uh, he proceeded to, to ask some questions and talk to me. And very quietly there he sat for a second. And then he asked me, he said this question to me. It got me thinking, and I really haven't developed this message until this point. But uh, he says, Pastor Ricky, he says... Can you hear God speak? And I just kind of, I, I, I mean, I, I was stunned by the question from such a little boy. And, and I, I kind of stuttered and stammered around a little bit, kind of like I am now, and for a couple seconds. And I, I tried to explain to him the best that I could. And uh, there was something that was fascinating about this, beyond the fact that this little child asked me this question, but how serious he was wanting to know, and I'm talking about a five, six-year-old little boy that was wanting to know, he was dying to know, can I hear from God? I mean, he really wanted to know because he sat there and he listened. You know when children really want to know something? They'll sit and listen. They're not here and there. When they really want to know something, they'll sit there and they'll listen. They'll, they'll attach, they'll, they'll grab on to everything you're saying. And... Uh, I believe that this little boy wanted to know if I could hear from God. Why? Because he wanted to know if he could hear from God. And I guess my answer satisfied him, and at least for the moment, because he soon got out of his chair, walked out the door. Uh, but that has stuck with me throughout the years. And it provided a message that I've, that I've just now developed, and, and this is the title of the message, Speak, Lord. Thy servant heareth. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 1, this is not where we're going to be, but it says there in Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, it says, God, who at sun, sundry times and in diverse manners spake 
in times past unto our, the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heirs of all things, but whom also he made the worlds. Now I'd like for you to turn back to 1 Samuel chapter number 3. And this is really where the message developed from. 1 Samuel chapter number 3. And I'm going to read a few verses here. The Bible says in verse 1, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he, began, he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel, and Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know that the Lord, neither was, know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if, thou, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in the, his place, and the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel, the Sa then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do this, do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I began, I will also make it end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. Here's the story as we go over it a little bit here. Samuel is just young and uh, not knowing the Lord, not knowing, understanding the things. He's in Eli's house, and Eli's taking care of him. And uh, uh, as the Lord calls upon Samuel, and Samuel doesn't recognize his voice. He doesn't understand what's going on. Can I say there's many Christians out there today don't recognize the voice of God? They don't hear his voice. And so Samuel goes to Eli and he says, here am I. He says, what do you, what do you want, basically, in my terms? And, and Eli says to him, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. We all have children like that, don't we? They come and bug us. And I want some water. No, go back to bed. So then the uh, second time he does it again, and, and uh, he goes to Eli again, and sa uh, Eli says, go back to bed. And then the third time after he does it, Eli realizes that God's speaking to him. He says, go and says, say this, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And that's where I want to get our message today. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Do you hear the Lord calling you? Do you hear him calling you? Let me ask you this morning, can you hear God speaking to you? See, I see God speaking to us through many different ways. Number one, I see God speaks through his creation. God speaks to us through his creation. As a little, as a little boy was leaving my office, he gave me another uh, message, another thought uh, that came from the Lord. He said, Pastor Ricky, God created us all different. But he created us to do the same thing. This little boy had a lot of wisdom in his young years, not knowing exactly what he meant, what he was meaning by this, but God was using him to bring something into my heart and prepare my heart for a message. And I remember when Lizzie was about that age, and, and I asked her often as I do, and some of you asked your children what they learned in junior church or in Sunday school, or what did they learn? And I remember Lizzie coming home to me one day, and I asked her, I said, Liz, what did you learn in church today, she said, well, God, uh, we heard, Dad, I, I learned that God created everything. The sun, the moon, the stars, the oceans, the animals, the flowers, the trees, the grass. 
And she paused for a second, which is very rare. But she paused for a second and she says, And God created the stars and everything there is. God created everything. And she says, God sure is good, isn't he? I'm thinking, God is good, isn't he? And if we would just take notice, we can hear him speak through his creation today. We can see him, his creation speaks of his creativity and, and his glory and his power and his love. If we would just sit back and look at it, at how can we not know that there's a God? Romans 1, chapter, uh, 1 verse 20 says, Because thou uh, that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God's saying there, hey, you can see me in creation. We can clearly see God. You see, it is the work of his fingers. It's his, uh, and he ordained it all. And I, I was talking to Faith the other day about this same point. She asked me just the other day, she said, Dad, she said, what the, about those that don't hear the gospel? And I told her, I said, God is gracious and he will make a way. But even at that, God speaks even through his creation. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 8, 3, it says, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou, create, thou hast ordained. Psalm 19, 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Both these verses that I just read to you here uh, are, are uh, written by, they were written by David. Now, if you know anything about David, David was a man who spent much time outdoors taking care of the sheep, the, the sheep as a shepherd. I believe that David was in tune with nature, which also being in tune with God. When he sat down underneath the starlit sky, I don't know about you, but I enjoy sitting and watching the stars at night. I enjoy seeing the creation of God, seeing the beauty, the splendor. Uh, some, someone asked me this morning, what is the, probably the most beautiful place you've ever been? I said, probably, I think Hawaii, because I love waterfalls. And the waterfalls I saw there is just so beautiful. And when I think about that, I think, man, God is good, isn't he? Isn't he smart? Isn't he powerful? He is wonderful. See, if we would just take time and explore and experience his creation... It was his fingerprints. We'll see his fingerprints all over this. I have a quilt that when I graduated from Bible college, uh, Christy's grandma asked me, she says, what do you want for graduation? I said, I would like for you to make me a quilt. And she says, okay. So this quilt has, is red, white, and blue, and it has flags all over. She asked me what I wanted. It's a beautiful quilt, beautiful quilt. And she made that out of love. And I, every time I walk back, it's in our spare bedroom. And every time I walk past that quilt, it's never used. But every time I walk past it, I remember the creator of that quilt. I think of the love and the, the hard work and the passion that she put into that quilt. And it reminds me of my grandma. Can I tell you, when I look at the beauty, the splendor, the creation of this world, when I see these things, it reminds me of the Creator. It reminds me of the Creator. I can hear Him speaking through creation, but also I can hear Him speaking through conversation. The Bible is a record of God's conversation with men in the past, and His words still speak to us today. They're still relevant, to, uh, relevant today. Let me, let me say that they're not just... They are just as relevant today, just as real today, as when they were first written. You realize that? If you really want to know for sure if you're hearing from God, we need to get in God's Word. Read it, pray over it, meditate over it. Can I, can I just tell you, I believe Christians today, why there are so many defeated, discouraged, depressed Christians today, is because they're not in the Word of God. How can we expect to get through the how, how can we expect to get the victories in life if we don't even know what God says about these things? 
The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means God breathed it. God, this, is, this is not just a book. It's not just words on the page. This is the very breath of God speaking to us today. It says, for all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Bible says in 2 Peter 1.21, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate thereon day and night, and thou, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Do you realize if you want to be prosperous, if you want to have good success, I'm not talking about financially, although God does bless that way sometimes, but can I just tell you, just because you are uh, not blessed financially does not, believe, does not mean that you're not blessed and that you're not prosperous and that you're not successful. The world defines success and prosperous by money. God says, no, it's a closeness to him. I see someone that's walking with God, that is close to God. That is prosperous. That is success in a spiritual sense. If you want to hear God speak, know His will, then you must read His Word. D.L. Moody said, I prayed for faith and thought it would strike me like, like lightning, but faith did not come. One day I read, Now faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. He said, I had closed my Bible and prayed for faith. I now began to study my Bible, and faith has been growing ever since. See, if God is not speaking to us, it's probably because we're not spending time in His Word. That's not what we want to hear, but that's what we need to hear. Folks, we need to spend more time in His Word. But then, number three, I can hear Him speak through circumstances. I read of a man on a deserted island. Having given up hope of being rescued, he, he built himself a house and, and tried to make the best of it for the rest of his, of his days. He had given up hope, but one day his house caught on fire. It was burned completely. The man sunk to his knees and he began to cry and weep in despair and said, God, what are you trying to do to me? And a short time later, a boat appeared. And rescued him. He asked the captain, he said, how did you know that I was on this island? He said, that was easy. I saw the smoke signal. Sometimes we think when bad things happen, we think, oh God, what are you doing to me? But God has a plan. God has a plan. God's speaking through circumstances sometimes. God's showing us. God's directing us. Remember a message preached on, on uh, God burning our barley fields. And what, what is our barley field? What is it that, that we're holding on to that God has to burn to get us closer to Him? When I was around 12 years old, I made a profession of faith. I remember this. And as a teenager, I drifted away from the Lord. And, but when I was 20 years old, God spoke to me in a very drastic way. And, and my friend and I had been kind of living it up the uh, the night before, and uh, on Sunday morning, we decided we were going to go to church. That's because my girlfriend was there, so I decided I'd go to church. And, and uh, on my way to church, I decided to see how fast my new rental car would go. And uh, not very smart, by the way. And it was on a hilly road, so when I jumped this hill, I overcorrected, and I landed about 18 inches from a telephone pole. I was unconscious. I was rushed to the, the, to the hospital. That was April, uh, April the 3rd, I believe, in 1998. During that time, God had spoke so vividly to me. He was, I mean, God was dealing with my heart about some things and just dealing with me and, 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 and uh, uh, how I needed to, to be saved. And God was revealing that. And that was in April. Well, on June, June the 13th, 1998, I called upon the Lord, I prayed, and I asked God to forgive me, for, to save me, and I knew for sure, I knew for sure that God had saved me at that point. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. See, I, I thought I was saved because I followed a plan, because I prayed, prayed a prayer, but in 1998 I got that settled in my heart. Now I'm not saying that God always speaks to us through things such as this 
but I know for sure that he used that as an opportunity to get my attention and cause me to listen. It would, it, it would be, it'd be good and it would be wise thing to ask God what he's trying to say to us during these, uh, when we're experiencing pain and sickness and heartache. We need to say, speak, Lord. Thy servant heareth. Thy servant heareth. But then we see number four, I can hear him speak at church. A preacher was preaching on a, a, his sermon and a, his young son watched him as he wrote his notes out. And the, the, the preacher wadded up the, the notes and he threw it in the trash can. And, and his son asked him, he says, God, he says, Dad, if you get your sermons from God, why do you keep starting over? See, God can speak to us in many places because God is everywhere. But the primary place that God speaks to us together corporately is at His church, His house. And He speaks to us. We hear Him. We hear Him in Sunday school. You know, I, I remember being saved. It was a Sunday evening. I was convinced that uh, uh, I'm convinced had I not been there, I might not be saved today. Pastor Taylor preached the message, and when the invitation was given, I, I could feel, I could, I, could, I could hear God speaking to my heart, the tugging of my heart, the calling that was happening. See, you can hear God speak at church. Much of what I've learned and been taught have been, uh, has been received at church. The lessons learned at Vacation Bible School and Sunday School and Junior Church and and. Uh, and at church, God has used those things. And I learned the, the, the stories about uh, the lessons of Jonah and the great flood and uh, of or, or Noah and the great flood and of Jonah and, and the, the big fish and the three Hebrew boys and being cast into the fiery furnace and, and Daniel, and the, uh, Daniel and his determination to pray no matter what the circumstances were. And I, I, I remember these stories that God used to speak to my heart and it was at church that I heard and learned most of these things. He speaks to us through songs, through prayers, through, through the Spirit, through the Bible lessons, and through sermons. All those things which we get. The Bible says, For not, uh, forsake not the assembly of ourselves together as a man or some is. But exhorting so much uh, each other so much more as you see the day approaching. You see, I can hear him finally. I can hear him at the cross. I can hear him at the cross. If we had been at the cross... On that day Christ was crucified, we'd have heard God speak. What he said is recorded in his word for us to read, but also speaks loudly to us today. God's words on the cross was the words of acceptance. What did he say to the dying thief when he says, remember me? Christ said this, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. You see, though he was a sinner and he deserved everything that was coming to him, God accepted him. Can I tell you, no matter what you've done, you know, how, how guilty you are, you can be saved today. You can be saved today. You see, though he was a sinner and deserved it, he, received, he, uh, he was receiving the cross, everything that he got. Jesus said to him, he says, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Jesus reached out to him on the cross. God is speaking to sinners today, calling him, uh, them unto himself. God spoke words of forgiveness to those who rejected him and condemned him to die on the cross. What did he say? He said, it's finished. Father, forgive them. See, God spoke words of salvation to the whole world when he said, it is finished. What was finished? Salvation's plan. We no longer have to do sacrifices. We no longer have to go to a priest or, or confess our sins to someone else. All we have to do is go to our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, and ask him forgiveness of sins, and he will save us. Let me ask you, can you hear him from the cross this morning? In closing this morning, I want to share with you a story that I read of two men and the choices that they made. One chose to listen to God, the other chose... To close his ears to God. They took two completely different courses. One guy's name is Billy. Billy is the name of the man who listened to God. 
Chuck is the name of the one who chose not to. In 1949, Billy was struggling over whether he could believe the Bible or not. A friend of his, Chuck, was enrolled in Princeton, and he was an intel. He was a very smart, uh, but it was a very uh, liberal theological uh, mind that he had, and, uh, and and this college that he went to was it began to rub off on Chuck. And one day, Chuck told Billy, he says, "Billy, you're 50 years out of date." He says, "People no longer accept the Bible as being inspired." as they did years ago. Your faith is too simple. Your language is out of date. You're going to have to learn new jargon if you're going to be successful in the ministry. Chuck later said, Poor Billy, I feel so sorry for him. He and I are taking two different roads. Chuck Templeton did not know how prophetic his words would be. Thankfully, Billy did not listen to Chuck. Billy searched the scriptures for answers. He prayed, he pondered, he listened to the voice of God. And finally, in a heavy-hearted walk on a moonlit night in the mountains, everything came to a climax. And gripping his Bible, Billy dropped to his knees and he said, Lord, Father, I'm going to accept this as thy word by faith. I'm going to allow faith to go beyond intellectual questions and doubts. And I will believe this to be your inspired word This was a pivotal moment in Billy's life. Billy decided to listen to God over listening to anybody else or his own thinking. He wanted to choose to listen to God. Chuck Templeton decided to close his ears. Devastated by doubts, he resigned. Chuck resigned from the ministry, moved to Canada, and became a commentator and a novelist. A few years ago, Lee Strobel interviewed Chuck Templeton for a book that he was writing. At the time of the interview, Templeton was 83 years old, and he was very ill. His voice was melancholy, and he reflected, uh, re- reflected tones as he answered questions about Jesus. He was, he said this, he was the greatest human being who ever lived. He's the most important thing in my life. He stuttered, searching for the right words. I know it may seem strange, but I have to say I adore him. Abruptly, uh, writes Strobel, Templeton cut short his thoughts. There was a brief pause, almost as if there was uncertain as to whether he could, should continue. But then Templeton did say one last thing to Strobel. He says, and if I may put it this way, he said in his voice, began to crack, I miss him. What happened to Billy? Well, you probably know the answer by now. Billy Graham was probably has probably preached to more people in more places and seen more people converted than any man in our time. He said, what is the point here? The point is this, we all have a a choice to make. Do we want to listen to God? Do we want to close our ears to Him? God speaks to us today. Can you hear Him? Can you hear Him? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. The Bible says this, And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Can I tell you this morning, God, if you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God is calling on you. Harden not your heart. Harden not your ears. If God is speaking to your heart this morning, I I challenge you. I challenge you to come to an altar. We can open up God's word so you can know for sure without a shadow of doubt that heaven's your home. You can have that assurance today. God is speaking to your heart. You say, I just don't know for sure if I was to die today, I'd go to heaven. Can I tell you, you say, how do I know if God's speaking to me? He's speaking to you right now. Right now. It's not, uh, let me say this, it's not Satan speaking to you. He don't want you to be saved. Right now, if God is speaking to your heart, that's, that's Him. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Saying, he's telling you, he's telling you the truth. He's speaking truth to you. Listen. Listen to what He's saying. That's the Holy Spirit of God dealing with you. And if that's you this morning, I, I want you to come. I want to pray for you. Say, Pastor, that's me. I, 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 can feel, I, I hear the Spirit talking to my heart right now. Pastor, pray for me. I need to be saved. I, I just don't know for sure if I was to die today, I'd go to heaven Pastor, please pray for me. Anyone like that? Would you be honest enough to raise your hand? 
and say, Pastor, pray for me. Anyone? Pastor, pray for me. Anyone? Maybe you hear and you say, Pastor, I'm saved, but I'm not living for the Lord like I should. I haven't been hearing His voice. I haven't been hearing Him because I haven't been reading my Bible. I haven't been as close to Him as I should. I haven't been what I should be for the Lord. Pastor, I need to get right with God. I need to, I need to begin a new walk with the Lord. Pastor, pr- please pray for me. Anyone like that? Would you be honest? Thank you for your hands. Others? Yes. Yes. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, you know the hands. You, you've seen the hands. Most importantly, you know the hearts of each person here today. Lord, I pray that you would speak. Holy Spirit of God, speak to our hearts. Lord, I know we have often, often we harden our hearts Lord, and we, we put away with how you've spoke to us and we say, ah, oh, I'll do it another time. I'll do it another place. I'll... But God, I pray this morning that we would be receptive. We would listen to your speaking. And Lord, that men and women, boys and girls across this room would put away their their pride, put away whatever's holding them back, and Lord, that they would come to an old-fashioned altar, whether it's for salvation, whether it's for service, whether it's for sanctification, I don't know, Lord. But Lord, I pray that men and women, boys and girls, would make that decision to listen to you this morning. Lord, speak as only you can. Save that one that's nearest hell. In Jesus' name, amen. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Would you stand to your feet as Miss Haley begins to play softly? I'm going to ask you to come find a place at the altar. God spoke to your heart right now. God spoke to you. You know, there's some of you that's been saved for years. Saved for years. Yeah, you're going to heaven. You know that for sure, but you've hardened your heart. You haven't been listening to him. You've been doing your own thing, listening to your own thoughts. What's the Bible say there in Proverbs 3? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. God's speaking to you. Listen. Listen to him as he speaks. God speaking to you this morning. Maybe he speak to you saying, I, I you know you need to be reading your Bible more. You know you need to be praying more. You know you need to be having a walk with me. Won't you come and seal that this morning? And say, God, with your help, I'm gonna pray more with I'm gonna have that walk with you. I'm gonna read my Bible. I, I'm gonna do this. I I need your help, Lord. I I need you to help me through these things. I tell you what, you do. You ask God to help you with those things, and you get an accountability partner. I'll be your accountability partner. Get someone that's going to challenge you to read your Bible and to pray and to walk with the Lord. Someone that will ask you, how's your prayer life? How's your Bible reading? How's your walk with the Lord? I say every Christian needs that. I've got an accountability partner. Every Christian needs that. As the Lord is dealing with hearts, you may be seated. Just be in an attitude of prayer, if you would. All right, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you again for being here. Let me go over some announcements as our men come forward to prepare for our offering. I want to remind you that our missionary of the week is Joshua and Melissa Booth. Our deacon of the week is Brother Travis Ivers. 
our family of the week is Brother Allen and Miss Angel Besor, and then uh, Besor, and then also our trustee of the week, Brother Jimmy Clevenger. Please pray for these folks. Remember them in your prayers this week. And then I want to give you just a couple announcements. This coming Wednesday, we have a missionary that's going to be with us. Uh, I'm not saying his name just due to, uh, uh, um, uh, but it's a missionary we support, and just to help keep him safe on the field. We're not mission mentioning his name. Also, Wednesday, we'll not have a... Uh, uh, Facebook Live, it'll be just um, uh, an old sermon, uh, something like that, playing on our Facebook. And so just so you know that. Uh, be, but be, be here if you can, and we're going to get a missionary update, and I know that will be a blessing to you. On February the 11th is our couples night out, and what we're going to do is we're going to have my daughters, they're, they're going to be here at the church, and if you want to bring your kids, and uh, it would be a good time to go out and... Uh, uh, just have a good time. We can do something organized or just you can go out with your wife or, or your husband and just have a good time and uh, we'll, we'll have the girls here so they can watch your kids and just to get out and enjoy because I know uh, uh, Valentine's Day is and a lot of people can't get away because they don't have a babysitter. This won't there'd be no cost to you. We want you to just enjoy the day. If you'd like to go out as a couples or if you'd like to go out as a group, it'd be fine as well. Uh, then on February the third, uh, February the tenth, Miss uh, Evelyn was kind to uh, show me that. But February the tenth will be our business meeting, so that's next Sunday, and our afternoon service will do our business meeting. All right, that's all the announcements that I have. Oh, I did want to say there's a sign-up sheet on the back table for our our uh, marriage our marriage retreat, and uh, so. Uh, if you are interested in that, that is April the 12th and the 13th. Uh, so if you're interested in that, the cost is $125. It's at the Cornerstone Inn in uh, Brown County. Wonderful place. Uh, but if you're interested in that, we only have like five more spots available. So please sign up for that. And then if you're interested in coming the night before on Thursday, it's only $75 in addition. So for $200, you can stay at a very nice place for two nights wonderful time i promise you you'll have a good time and uh so please sign up and uh, that's like i said the availability is uh, we, we only have a few more spots left so please sign up as soon as you can all right let's have a word of prayer and we'll take up this morning's tithes and offerings brother tim sir would you please Father, we just thank you and praise you for your goodness today we thank you for your word we thank you for uh, sharing your word through our pastor lord i just pray you for just encouraging us and lord we know that if we uh, spend more time in your word and listening to you, that you will direct our ways. And Lord, help us to uh, be committed to that. Help us to focus more on you and less on us. Lord, I just pray that you bless uh, all that we give back to you today and use it to your honor and glory, Father. In Jesus' name. all stand we'll close the word of prayer we'll take a five minute break come back here at 11:30. and we'll have our afternoon pre-afternoon service and uh we don't usually take very long usually half hour to 45 minutes somewhere around there so if you're able to stick around we'd love to have you brother sean sir would you please close us in word of prayer
tune into the room today, Lord. Father, as we get ready for our next message, Lord, I just ask that you would just uh, prepare our hearts and speak to us, Lord, so that we could be effective witnesses for you. And Father, again, we just thank you and love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.